safety, for their own safety, as well as to protect the integrity of our work. It just started not even a minute ago. Breaking now, at this hour, we are live in Wyoming and the desperate search for 22-year-old Gabby Petito in the rugged terrain of the Grand Tetons, Wyoming. Search dogs have now been called off and sent home as the medical examiner's wagon approaches. We believe the body of the so-called Van Life girl has been discovered in the dispersed camping area at rough terrain Bridger Teton. Gap me on a cross country trek with boyfriend 23 year old Brian oh, yeah, yeah. Laundry when he comes home to his parents in Florida with Gabby's van, but without Gabby, September 1, it's 10 more days before Gabby's parents realize Gabby is missing. But in the thick of it all, in the middle of a search for Gabby, boyfriend Brian Laundry disappears. His parents now claiming he went for a walkabout in the densely wooded and swampy Mayakachi Reserve, over 25,000 acres of wilderness. Or did he? Does Laundry even have any idea Gabby's body has been found? Where was she killed? How was she killed? When was she killed? Tonight, what happened to Gabby? Good evening. I'm Nancy Grace. Thank you for being with us. The tip line for anyone that thinks they know anything about what happened to Gabby, 1-800-CALL-FBI. With me, an all-star panel to break down what we know at this hour. But first, straight out to investigative reporters on the ground outside the home of boyfriend Brian Laundry and in Wyoming, staring vast Grand Teton National Park. Straight to Wyoming. And Fox News senior correspondent Laura Engel. Laura, thank you for being with us. What do we know? Hi, Nancy. Well, you know, the day started off with all of us following along with the search efforts that were going on for the missing 22 year old. And then by midday, all of our phones went off with news that the county coroner had been called to the very spot where those search efforts were being focused over the weekend and specifically today. Now those search teams had been combing at the specific area at the Spread Creek Dispersed Camping Area. They were looking for any signs of Petito after her boyfriend, as you mentioned, Brian Laundry, returned home from their cross-country trip to Florida without her in her van September 1st. Now, it appears, Nancy, that a travel blogger who posts videos to YouTube may have provided a critical clue overnight to Gabby Petito's last known whereabouts after discovering she had captured the couple's white Ford van in the area on August 27th near the Grand Teton National Park. And she shared that video with the FBI and family this morning. Now, we grabbed still shots of the dashboard of the couple's van, both from the body cam footage of that traffic stop we've all seen in Utah on August 12th, and of this blogger's van sighting. And you can clearly see in these pictures what looks like Gabby's hat in the same spot on the dashboard in both videos. So this was a strong indication. This was a real clue in the case which led to police to this campsite. And though this grim discovery was made today, the investigation is far from over. As you said, many questions. The FBI is saying today they still need anyone who may have seen anything in this area to come forward. Joining me in Wyoming is Laura Ingram, Fox Chief News Correspondent. Laura, it, it's so important that we understand when Brian Laundry left. Now, how do we figure that out? Uh, there is some discussion that he actually flew home in the middle of their trip and then went back out. And the fact that the van is sitting there seemingly abandoned gives me a lot of information. But I want to get back to the coroner's wagon pulling up today and the search dogs being called off. That had to be a real kick in the teeth because so many of us have been hoping and praying that Gabby was still alive. And somehow she was trapped down a ravine or she had taken up with other friends and was making her way home somehow, some way. But that was not to be. What happened when the coroner's van pulled up? 
you know, they've kept all press away from this area, not just when that happened today, uh, but earlier yesterday when this area had been honed in on this is going to be a potential area. And then, of course, that tip from the YouTube uh, blogger came in. Uh, but when that happened, you know, there was just almost this call that came over the area uh, because all of the reporters in the area, I was actually spending uh, a little bit of my day with stepfather Jim Schmidt earlier, and we had done uh, a walk and talk interview uh, talking about just the grand scope of what the search area has been. And when you get here, if you've never been to this area and you are just taken aback uh, by the mountains and the, the uh, wide Tell her spaces, to come inside. And, you know, talking about what that was And doing. that I'm so we had just had a conversation, busy, um, but she can go ahead and go to bed. Today and being hopeful that there were going to be um, some type of results, not this one, of course. Um, it, it really it hit all of us, and I think that everybody watching and following this case uh, feels the same. Um, just so incredibly sad at these new developments. All right, Angle Standing by, let's bring in the panel straight out first to Joseph Scott Morgan, Professor of Forensics, Jackson State University, death investigator. He has handled over 10,000 uh, death scenes. To you, Joseph Scott Morgan, there's so much we got to find out. If Laundrie was there at the time she died, he's in a lot of trouble. Forensics can tell us when she died, how she died, where she died. Was she dragged to that location? Was she, was she in shallow grave? There's so many questions. Yeah, there are, Nancy. And one of the things that we like to think about is... Can you go give me Elizabeth's taco from over there? Uh, these remains that were found both pre Jenna? Uh, prior to death, and then, of course, post-mortem. Go bring me the uh, red bowl. Was body deposited? Uh, was, she, uh, was she placed under rubble? Uh, were, were there cut trees that were placed over her, like brush piles, this sort of thing? Or was there an effort uh, to dig a grave, maybe a shallow grave? Uh, you know, and so this is all going to go to the behavior of the individual that wound up placing this body out there in this wilderness area. And there's a lot that we can tell about the behaviors of the individual that had contact with her. How, in fact, were these remains treated? Because many times uh, that will tell the tale about what kind of relationship this individual That's had. That's right. That's why right. she was Straight out to Cheryl McCollum, founder and director of the Cold Case Research Institute, uh, been in the trenches for many, many years on cases just like this. Cheryl McCollum, uh, the, the best case scenario, Cheryl, is that they got into an argument, much like they did in Moab, and he left and left her there. That is the best case scenario. But the way we find the body is going to answer everything. Explain where that body is located, the condition of that body, what was done to that body. This case is going to be. You need to get your stuff ready for school for tomorrow. The injuries to her, the injuries to her clothing. What? what? The jewelry had been removed. Did it look like a fight had ensued? Was one area missing? You need to go get your stuff ready for school for tomorrow. We're going to work this case backwards now. And I think it's going to tell a very simple now. story. Now. Uh, by the way, uh, well, when you say we're going to work the case backwards, can we just focus for one moment on what's happening sure. now? For those of you just joining us, a body has been found there in, in the Bridge of Teton area. It's a dispersed camping area, which means you're not where there are commodes and sinks and little porta potties and a trash can. You are beyond that. Uh, off the grid, so to speak, you're out in the wild. So what I'm trying to say, she already break it down. If it looks like she fell down her vein, that's going to be natural causes. If she is in a shallow grave, that is a whole nother thing, Cheryl McCullough. Let me, let me jump in, Nancy. That's not necessarily true. If she fell down a ravine, they're going to go on top of there, and they're going to look for drag marks. They're going to look for anything that was maybe on the bottom of her shoe, or what's not on the bottom of her shoe. Is one shoe missing? Is it down the pathway somewhere? Just because she's down a ravine does not in any way indicate this was an accident. Well, okay, you say that, but what I'm saying is, if she is found in a shallow grave, that changes everything. In other words, that is not death by accident or death by natural causes. The whole panel of experts hey. is standing by the way hey, hey, hey. in. But when we come back um, from Florida, Jenna, Jenna, Bobena, actually faced charges Jenna. in the 
Can you go put this in the kitchen for mom and get me another drink? Can you take this for me? Hurry, baby. Elizabeth's little footsies is on me. Oh, uh, can you bring me my uh, a new soda, please? Green Light's a debit card for kids and teens. With an app to manage chores, save money instantly, and keep tabs on spending. Um. Now, no one's saving more than you Wait. You need to put that box of makeup away. And go line up your shoes and find out what shirt you're going to wear, what pants, your socks, all that. Now, please, it's a commercial. You'll have enough time to do it and come right back. Hurry. Put the makeup up. Put the makeup away. I guess theoretically I could pause this for a minute. Welcome back. Now we go from Wyoming to Florida. Standing by, Fox News correspondent Charles Watson. He's there outside the laundry home. Charles, any sign of Brian Laundry? Uh, no signs just yet, Nancy. But as you can imagine, there are a lot of heavy hearts here in Northport after hearing the news on Gabby Patino that apparently babe, includes the baby. Where's the uh? Laundry who released a statement a short time ago through their? Can you find mommy the remote so we can turn it up? I don't know if the viewers can hear the TV. I'm recording this so Cherie can see because it's not streaming live and I think it was supposed to be. Never mind, I got the remote right here. This of course Let's see. as law enforcement desperately trying to track down Brian. Nearly half a dozen agencies have zeroed in on the 25,000 acre Carlton Reserve. They spent the last two days navigating tough and muddy terrain with ATVs, drones, and canines as police say he could possibly be a danger to himself. That said, there are a lot of questions about how the 23-year-old slipped away unnoticed. Brian was not going to speak with us. He would not speak with us. So knowing that, we weren't dedicating a whole lot of resources to following around someone who is not wanted on a crime. Now, Nancy, Brian's parents reported him missing on Friday, but that was several days after they last saw him. Police say his parents told officers Brian drove to the Carlton Reserve Tuesday for a hike. When they didn't hear from him, authorities say his parents claim they drove to the reserve the next day and picked up his abandoned Mustang that now sits in the driveway of their home. Publicly, Brian's parents have been silent as seen in this run-in with Fox Digital. Hi, Roberta. Can I ask you a few questions? Why are you covering up for your son? Why aren't you helping with the police? And Nancy, we've reached out to Northport Police and asked them uh, if the discovery of what appears to be Gabby Petito's body will change anything about their investigation. Right now, we're waiting to hear back, Nancy. Uh, Charles, question to you. I understand that the search for Brian Laundry. They has did been find the body. The night. Why? Well, they think. It's her body. They uh, just well, have to prove so it. What we've heard from Northport Police so far is that they spent They'll most just of the do day, a DNA uh, test. Going through that top terrain and that money water, but it's just such a large area for them to come through that they haven't really been able to find anything uh, between today and Saturday. Now, as I mentioned, they had canines out there, ATVs, drones, they're using everything. Go turn that fan off for mom. It's making too much noise. To find anything. They've even got uh, some uh, clothes. Oh, I love you so much. You help mom. Mama. So far, no, 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 uh, Good no girl. Or any Thank you. And that nature reserve, Nancy. Charles, thank you. For those of you just joining us, uh, we now know the remains, according to the FBI, found out in Bridger Teton, are most likely that of Gabby Petito. 
the search for the boyfriend, Brian Laundry, still goes on. Straight out to J.C. McGrehan, survivalist expert, joining us. J.C., thank you for being with us. Have you ever been down there in that 25,000 acre reserve with 80 to 90 uh, hiking trails? It's swamp. Sometimes in the middle of the day, I've been there. It, it's so dark, you can't see in front of you, much less at night. What is he doing out there? That's a great question. I have not been to that specific area, but I have been down into southern um, uh, Florida, and it's, it's, in my opinion, it's one of the more difficult areas uh, as far as outdoors is concerned. What he's doing, great question. Um, gosh, probably just honestly trying to stay alive tonight um, and for the past five nights. There's a lot down there that is uh, going against them. So you have alligators, you have snakes, wild boar, um, you have bobcats, and the list goes but on. There are campsites. There are campsites there, JC. And he took a car, which I assume right. was loaded with gear. So he's missing, or as Gabby's family says, hiding. That's the question. It's a whole nother terrain as compared to out there in the Tetons. Uh, I want to go to Dr. Bethany Marshall, psychoanalyst. You know, Dr. Bethany, I appreciate the family's prayers. We've all been praying about Gabby. But if Gabby died of natural causes, such as falling down a ravine, being left in the wilderness where she didn't have food or water, uh, succumbing to the elements, don't you think? that telling us where she was earlier on would have been a huge help in addition to all those prayers. And believe me, I'm not knocking the prayers. I want the prayers. But how about telling me where she was at the beginning so they can start the search earlier and possibly find her alive, Dr. Bethany? Nancy, these parents, Brian Laundrie's parents, they, Gabby, Gabby Petito lived with them for an entire year. When Gabby and Brian set off on their van life trip, they were engaged to be married. So Gabby Petito was their future daughter-in-law. And they're not coming, they're not forthcoming with details about where she was. And I'm gonna tell you something about Brian Laundrie. I've been uh, reading a lot about him. I've been listening to the interviews with Gabby's best friend. And Brian Laundrie did not like to have separation between him and Gabby. He was quite jealous, he was quite possessive. The day that that uh, van was pulled over in Moab, remember with the police officers, and we have all the body cam footage, that fight started that morning, Nancy, because she was working on her social media. He became upset. I've listened to the tape many times and watched it, and I think what happened that day was he became jealous and enraged because she was working on her social media. They got into an altercation. He attacked her, Nancy. She had to push him away. He went into the, got into the van, locked her out, the ultimate power play. And I'm guessing because she was so desperate that she tried to climb into the window of that van that she was worried about the destruction of her property. She was working on a website he well, did I not think she was that. thinking also, he was... Bethany, about surviving. Because Cheryl McCullough, all they had was the van. And she was locked out of her van. No wonder she was upset. Nancy, don't you remember during the interview with law enforcement, he said, he patted his pockets and said, I've got the keys. And he was afraid she might drive off and leave him. So he was not going to give her keys to her own car and then locked her out where she had to climb in through the window. This was a person that was controlling did that the scene. Moab, Did the Moab incident where police were called start the, the beginning of the end? How did Gabby die? What was the cause of death? How was she found? This is a Gabby Petito investigation. Stay with us.
Yeah, you ain't gonna go to jail, right? Yes, sir. Stop. Free episode of Cops Now at FoxNation.com and sign up for Fox Nation to get all the new exclusive episodes streaming October 1st. Yeah. Welcome to Fox News Live. I'm Anita Vogel. The Senate's parliamentarian is blocking Democrats from using their three and a half trillion dollar spending package on immigration. This comes as a huge blow to President Biden and is a major setback to Democrats pushing to help immigrants gain permanent residency and potentially citizenship in the U.S. Democratic Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says his party will pursue alternative proposals on their immigration agenda. The U.S. has begun flying Haitian migrants from the Texas border back to their homeland. It could be one of our nation's swiftest large-scale expulsions of refugees in decades. At least 12,000 are camped under a bridge in Del Rio, Texas. More than 300 migrants arrived in Port-au-Prince on three flights today, and another six flights are expected tomorrow. I'm Anita Vogel, now back to a Fox News special, a Gabby Petito investigation. Welcome back, I'm Nancy Grace. This is a Gabby Petito special investigation Joining me in all-star panel to make sense of what we know now in the last hours as we go to air. A body has been found in the Tetons, and we believe, along with law enforcement, that the search for Gabby is over. This is Gabby. Straight out to Joe Scott Morgan, professor of forensics and death investigator, having logged over 10,000 death cases. Joe Scott, I want to know, is she clothed? Is she not clothed? Uh, can we get cause of death, depending on how long she's been out there? Can I tell how long she's been dead? Let's start with that. If so, how? Uh, Is that stuff wet? Uh, yeah, and let's keep in mind, when the vlogger took that, that image, Nancy, it was, I think, the 27th of August. So we're 22 days yep. down range since that image was captured of the van. And that's significant for us in medical legal death investigation. That means that, let's just suppose that she had died Open the door. at that, uh, approximating that time. I hate to say this, but her body will be well, in a state of moderate uh, decomposition. Uh, you know, she's gonna be exposed, the body out there will have been exposed to the elements uh, and also any kind of animal activity that's out there. So they've got an uphill battle relative to that. We have to also think about um, what are we going to be able to tell relative to the trauma? Now, let's keep in mind, we know that there had already been some kind of physical contact in this altercation that had happened earlier. Uh, is there any signs of violence, and will they be able to determine what that violence hey, actually Scott. is? Yes, ma'am. Joe Scott, uh, we know she was alive on about August 25, all right, because she FaceTimed her contact yes. with her mother. After that, the mom got some texts that she does not believe right. were written by Gabby, which means the whole thing was staged if those texts were not written yes. by Gabby. But let me focus with you, Joe Scott, on the body. At this juncture, where's Gabby's let's cell phone? Go with That's what I want to know. As the TA did time yet. Will we be able to tell? It's not funny. Do you spread those towels out nice and hang them Just so that they that. flow perfectly with the wind? Yeah, quite possibly, Nancy, they can. Again, we have to factor in this idea of decomposition, but in the muscles of the neck, potentially, there could be signs of hemorrhage. Also, there might be an opportunity to still appreciate the TTI, which are little blood vessels that kind of blow out in the eyes. I doubt and it. Kind of soft tissues I doubt it mouth. very seriously. And some of those things After can be a picked month, up. we're going to see her be able to tell if the blood vessels in her eye were burst. I was hoping you were going to say something about a potential fracture of the hyoidal bone, which can happen when there is a strangulation. Yep. And regarding, uh, let's just say a knife, I would be looking for a nick or a cut, a scratch of some sort on her rib cage or her bones. It's gonna be really, really difficult. I understand, Joe Scott, the autopsy is not set until Tuesday, why? Right. Uh, yeah, and it will take some time for them to complete this autopsy. And let me tell you why. One of the things they're going to be looking for, first off, 
the autopsy will take some time because they're going to be very, very careful. And Nancy, when a body is in this state, which we assume that it is, they have to be extra careful because there's things that are easily missed because of the changes after death. One other thing they're going to be looking for is to try in some way to draw toxicology on her. Mm -hmm. And at this point, that could be difficult as well. To J.C. McGree and survivalists joining us, tell me about the um, elements at this time of year where she was found. Yeah, it should be on the I, stove. I figure out how that's going to weigh if it's not, then the it's in the fridge. Analysis of her body. Uh, there's yeah, also the like area, Louisiana um, hot sauce. The temperature is fluctuating. Or very uh, you know, Jose Olay hot sauce. I don't know, some type of hot sauce. So hot, the hot sauce is pretty good. Place. Um, so we all know that is definitely going to play a uh, huge factor in, in her body, of course. She's uh, given up. Expert, but yeah, right. she, she don't want to be here no more. Temperatures, the high heat. Um, How do you know she wants to lay in the street? It's been raining as well. And then you're dipping down into she the runs when she sees the car. That makes it all the more important that the coroner preserve this scene. Coroner still well, out She likes there. being out there because the bag of kitty food's out there. If you go get a bowl of kitty food and bring it in, she'll want to stay inside. No, that's La Crema. Our nation's first responders it's a pouch. and put their lives on the line every day. It's so white. First responders, we're giving all active law enforcement, firefighters, it's by and Daisy. Medical services workers, Fox Nation, it's, for free. For it's a squirt bag. Year. If you're an active first responder, I had it on the stove to next to the cheese. Thank you for keeping us all safe. If you and find the bag of shredded cheese, cheese, you should be able to find the bag I'm of today. Jenna. Where'd you put the sour cream? That was on the stove with the tortillas. That's my son, Noah. And that? We call that the green light effect. Jenna, green where'd you put the tortillas and sour cream? We didn't have to manage chores, send money instantly, and keep tabs on spending. Sour cream should now be there too. saving more than me spending. In fact, he recently saved up to buy his mom a gift. But Maybe not. The gift is just how smart he's learning to be with his money. And the Well, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. The sour cream's missing. I didn't hide the sour cream. It was right there on the stove. I think your cat took off with it. Kiara. Maybe it fell in the freezer or something. I don't know where the sour cream is. You usually don't use sour cream. You usually use hot sauce, don't you? Like Put some hot sauce on it. Tomatoes and cabbage. We came across a white van that had Florida plates. And I slowed it down so you can possibly see it a little bit better. Earlier today, human remains were discovered, consistent with the description of Gabrielle Gabby Petito. How does all of that physical evidence, the triangulation, the iPhones, the Apple Watch, the laptop, the car navigation, the receipts, the ATMs, the credit cards, how does that timing fit with the death of Gabby Petito? Straight out to Fox Chief Investigative Reporter Laura Ingle joining us right there in Wyoming. What do we know? Hi, Nancy. Well, the next thing that we're looking at now is the coroner's office. And the Teton County coroner has told Fox News that they plan on performing the autopsy of Gabby Petito, who they believe is Gabby Petito, on Tuesday. And that, of course, not only will help determine the cause of death, but also will determine the timing of the death. And that, of course, is very important and will be key in determining the timeline of her last days of her cross-country journey with her boyfriend, Brian Laundry, who arrived at his home in Florida on September 1st. This area where human remains were found today remains closed as investigators continue their work gathering evidence. The hope not only to find more physical evidence there, but to hear from anyone who's in the area. The FBI today saying that they still need more information 
Early today, as you played there in that sound, a travel blogger provided a video she shot at the campground where she filmed a wedding. Are you sure that's not the, the other new one? I buy a new one every she month. She and her companion didn't think anything of it at the time, but when the news came out about this case, the expiration date. Her videos, knowing she was in that area, and there it was, the white van pulled over at a specific campsite where the search teams were able to hone in on their efforts. So, uh, once again, as the FBI spoke to us today, they said, please, huh? if you were in this area, go back and look at your pictures go back well i don't know i i didn't i don't remember shoving it in there but i could have to this case like i could have thrown it back there does it look brand new like around the yeah, edges and Wyoming stuff to Florida, Laura Engel, thank you. and like the, Florida, the part where you open it up Watson does it look like someone was just recently squirted oh. out uh laundry's family is telling us that he has gone into this 25 take that off as a lid why should i believe them i mean no offense but he was home it's for open or days, brand new to september 11th uh, not is? returning okay. Gabby's parents' calls, their emails, their texts, tell us anything. Where is she? Why should I believe them now? How do I know he's not on a plane to Cuba, for Pete's sake? <laughs> Well, Nancy, that's a lot of, that's a question that's on a lot of people's uh, minds. And uh, uh, tomorrow, I mean, the police say they haven't found any signs just yet of Brian Landry. So you can expect the search to pick up come tomorrow morning. It is uh, likely we'll see dozens of agents scouring through the 25,000 acre Carlton Reserve. Uh, Brian's parents said he went to that nature reserve last Tuesday and several days later on Friday, uh, they reported him missing. Uh, police say Brian is a person of interest very important to note that he is a person of interest uh, in the case pertaining to Gabby Petito no word yet on whether police will change that designation uh, with the news of the discovery of that body believed to be Gabby Petito Nancy why has Brian Laundry left why should we believe he is in the Carlton Reserve or has he left the country left the state we don't know Let's go straight back out to the panel to Dale Carson, high profile lawyer out of uh, Jacksonville and former Fed with the FBI. How can you make the forensic evidence of her body being found fit with all of the other evidence such as triangulation and what we know of his movements? Well, hey Nancy, there's an odd twist to all of this. You would want the medical examiner to demonstrate Is your stuff ready for school? Landry was back home. Jenna. And now because of the Jenna, you got your backpack ready? Changes in the body. That's Jenna. not going to be possible. You know what socks we're you're wearing tomorrow? Exact um, time of death. Um, and the result um, will be that it's not Okay, we'll go be get it ready. One way or the other, whether he was back Make your bed home, ready for bed. Get your pillows died. all nice and comfy. So that's go a on. Big problem for get your stuff lined up for school. In protecting him. In addition to which we also now know that it's going to be oh. difficult to determine the manner of death, what actually caused her death. If she simply fell off and he left and she had her phone with her and he didn't abandon her and take the phone with him as we suspect he did, then mm -hmm. that may change it up and make him more guilty. But they still have to demonstrate that he's the one who actually was the instrumentality of death. That Basically, killed. that he was there with her at the time, or around the time of her death. Cheryl, jump in. How can we? And again, he is not a suspect in her death. Jump in. This is what law enforcement is doing right now. He returned without her. There was a text message sent that said, we're in California, you know, at Yosemite. There's no way Gabby would not know the state she was in. She had planned this trip for years. She had it on an app. She had it in her journal. Oh. She was he said, it daily with a whoever had, whoever had her phone, phone and sent that text message to her mom said California, Yosemite National Park, or Yosemite's in Wyoming. Not, not California. And she knows, Are like, the states very this well. Is it's like, there's no way she would have said she California. Guys, all going back to California, back Yosemite. To Wyoming, when we come wow. Back, with Gabby Petito at the time of her death. I wonder, I wonder if, if he never wanted to go on the trip, if it was just her.
Because like, First net was born. like built with AT&T and the federal government. She would make First most of the videos the by herself and then like grab him and kiss him. Or like be like, there's Ryan over there and he'll be like on a yoga mat, like far off, like not even near her. And they were fighting about her. They were fighting about her being able to uh, like actually do it, like make a business out of her videos online. Got it. You didn't believe in her? Her business. Oh, let me go ahead and pause this. Say, had the boyfriend, Brian Laundry, or his family come forward and given her whereabouts. Joining me now on the ground from Florida, Kelly Cowan, Fox 13. Kelly, what's happening? Hey, good evening to you. So I've just spoken to the North Court Police. They tell me that now this investigation is in the FBI's hands. I specifically asked whether or not a warrant has been issued for Brian Laundry. Of course, according to the police, he's been missing since Tuesday, but they want to caveat that by saying that according to his parents, he's been missing since Tuesday. So when I talked to police earlier today, they explained it that uh, when they showed up on Friday at the family's invitation, they finally had the opportunity to go in there and talk. The family would only talk about Brian, only interested in talking about him as a missing person, would not speak with them about Gabby Batito. They told the police that he'd left on Tuesday in his car, taken that to uh, Mayaka State Park, the Carlton Reserve, and uh, that he didn't come back. After several hours, they went there for whatever reason, according to the police, later on that afternoon and picked up his car and brought it home, then waited until Friday to let the police know about any of that. So that's what the police are saying. And again, that's, that's weird. The, uh, parents that's weird. Kelly Cowan, I hear you, and I believe that's what they said, but it doesn't make sense. Your grown son goes on a walkabout in Carlton Reserve, 25,000 acres of swamp and forest, and then after just a couple of hours, you go and bring his car home? Cheryl McCall, it's not making sense. When it doesn't make sense, Bet you that car was never even there. It. It's a lie. It's about being in California. He has not cooperated in any way. It's a lie to throw off the investigation. They the car because law enforcement said it can't stay here overnight. They say they dropped it off there so he would have a ride to get back home. We have no way of knowing, A, when he left. We only know what they're telling us, that he left on Tuesday. We don't have any idea the direction he went, whether he was on foot or car or train or plane. We have no idea. So you're saying he didn't drive that car to that... Reserve. We don't know. That's what so, we don't so know. How do they but what we do up? know is that in in the last hours, a body has been found, and we believe it is that of Gabby Petito. Outrage building. Could her life have been saved? That doesn't make sense. I think the family's covering for him. The same way those parents covered for uh, Casey Anthony. They're going to protect their adult son. She's the face of the revolution. Has been found. Now, more questions piling on. Had she survived in a homemade shelter under a rod? Had she tried to build a fire? Did she die of natural causes? Or was Gabby Petito killed? Outraged building. As Brian Laundry and his family had refused to speak, did they know her whereabouts? Could her life have been saved? And the reality to Kelly Cowan, Fox 13, joining us out of Florida, it seems as if the online community helped solve this case. Well, in many ways, they came together and were able to provide all kinds of crucial pieces of evidence. Now, we don't know exactly what the FBI and investigators had before they came forward, but sometimes right. law enforcement has to submit subpoenas. It takes time for an investigation, for everybody who's screaming about the cell phone records and things like that during this. That takes time to gather all that information. But when you have a community, does. Like the one that she was aspiring to be in, that's constantly posting photographs, blog videos, you know, that it was a blogger that helped find that van and pinpointed that was on the 27th. We have video of it because we're from Florida. We noticed that van with its Florida plates and here it is. Here's the evidence. You're right. They were also able You're to use right. a website that she was using. For all that triangulation and the analytics of the FBI takes time. You're right, Kelly, to Cheryl McCollum. 
you know, if I look at all the other evidence, does it appear laundry was there at the time she that she got your stuff ready for school? Absolutely. Nancy, the bottom line is if she slipped Jenna, is your stuff ready? Or she had some kind of medical event, he left her clothes and everything in that state. That's the best he is. He the be worst he is, is, is he had a hand in it. And I'm going to tell you something. The minute he sent the bogus text message, the minute he drove five days straight to his mama, never searching for her, not responding to Gabby's mama, not posting on social media, she had a fan base. He could have alerted them immediately. I can't find her. I went to take a shower. I came back to the van. She wasn't there. He didn't do any of that. His inaction tells me as much as what he did after the fact. I can guarantee you that right now, the FBI, police in Florida, in Wyoming, are gathering all their analytics, all their evidence, to try and determine was Laundry with her at the time that she died. For many of us, for all of you that had high hopes, Gabby would be found alive today. The search has ended. And the discovery of a body that we believe is Gabby. Tonight, our prayers go on for Gabby's family and for justice. Nancy Grace, signing off. Good night. Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin. We've